as always i want to welcome all of you that are here live with me if you are watching replay say hello in the comments where you're from if you are watching live if you're watching replay i would like to know and i'm going to begin because i value your time as always so as uh, as, as always in my lives, I'm going to walk you through what we're going to do and then the supplies you're going to need so you know what you are going to go, you know, like what's going, what's going to happen basically. So if you've seen my posts or on Instagram or TikTok, <laughs> you probably have seen that this is uh, what we are going to work on today. And this little project came out from the, an idea I saw on Pinterest, uh, which I'm not going to bore you about, but this is the, the that's the thing. I love Pinterest because it always gives me a, an inspiration. And when I saw that photo, I immediately, immediately thought I need to kind of make it something similar in a festive way. So this is what I came up with. And to save my time, because I don't have much time um, before Christmas, I didn't want to draft the pattern from scratch. So I thought it would be a fantastic idea for me and also for you to show you how you can uh, hack, amend, alter, call it whatever you want, an existing sewing pattern uh, to create something completely different because this is the, uh, the original pattern that I used. This is the original project as you, and as you can see, they are slightly different. The size is different and also all the details are different uh, as well. So I thought, why not make it a live class, something um, that you may want to try just before Christmas. I printed my pattern at 130% because as you can see, this mini pouch is tiny and I wanted to create my reindeer pouch slightly bigger so I can put slightly bigger um, items inside, maybe like sweets or something so I can stuff in um, my elf stocking. <laughs> so I thought, you know, this would be way too small. That's why I printed my pattern slightly larger. So I'm going to show you the original pattern so this is how it looks like. So it's only one page and I have my pattern here printed at 130%. So you can see it is significantly larger. So you can print your pattern at different scale if you prefer, you know, even larger pouch or if you want to create different sizes, feel free. Um, if you want to, if you want to create very tiny reindeer pouch, you can use the original pattern as well. This tutorial will be more of a freehand because this is what I typically do when I'm drafting and, and hacking my patterns. And this way you will be able to use this knowledge to go and use other patterns that you may have already uh, in your catalog because I know as a bag maker we have so many different patterns from so many different designers so you may not uh, have my pattern but you may have something similar so you will be able to you know use this information to amend something else if you wish to so as always you'll need some paper I'm using just printing uh, normal printing paper you probably need some glue or cello tape uh, because we'll go, we will add some sim allowance. Then you will need pencil or pen. I have a fine point pen, so you can see clearly on the camera. Scissors, because you'll need to cut out your pattern. And a ruler, because we're going to draft some pattern pieces and we're going to add sim allowance. And I like to use tracing paper whenever I'm, tr I'm uh, creating new patterns. I find this method much easier, but if you don't have a tracing paper, I bet you have parchment or baking paper in your kitchen. So grab it, grab a couple of sheets. Uh, you only need a small amount for today's tutorial. All right. So this tutorial, I think will be quite quick because there isn't really a lot we're going to amend to the pattern. We, we will amend the back pattern piece, but we're going to create 
we're going to draft new pieces as well. So what we're going to do, we're going to draft new flap because this is different shape than the original pattern. So we need to redraft the flap and then we're going to do the little eyes, the face, the antlers and the ears. So we're going to draft those pattern pieces. Again, don't worry um, if you are not very good at drawing or sketching. This is absolutely fine. I'm going to show you how I just freehand quickly to just draw those shapes. It doesn't have to be pretty. You know, this is something to improve your skills. And if you are like keen on drafting your own patterns, this will give you an idea of, you know, how to start. So let's begin, shall we? <laughs> so first we're going to take our back panel. So let me know in the comments if you are uh just watching or if you are actually following along with this tutorial i would love to know so i'm just going to take this aside so here we have the back panel piece which on the original pattern this is this pattern piece this here so as you can see this is a this is the flap so that becomes the back and the flap but because we need to stitch the ears and the antlers what i've done i've divided that panel in two different sections so we can stitch those extra details in between you could do that as well on the side seam so you could put the ears and antlers on this side but for some reason i really like them to be on top but that's just my personal uh, preference so when you look at your pattern, you'll see those notches here. Those notches indicate where the front ends. So excluding the seam allowance, if I just fold the seam allowance under and I place this front on top, I align the bottom. This will tell me where is the top edge of my front panel. So that is where we're going to divide our back and flap into two separate pieces. So simply using those notches as a guide, what you can do is to draw a line. So you basically want to connect them just like that. I did it a little bit off, so I'm just going to fix that. There you go. Then. You can simply take your scissors <laughs> and cut it along that line. All right, so this is the flap, the original flap. We don't really need it, so I'm just going to put it aside. We won't, we won't be using it anymore. So now what we need to do is to add seam allowance here because those two pieces as you know, they need to be stitched. So you need that extra space to connect them. So that's where the paper comes handy. So I'm just going to take one piece and I have my glue. If you have a cello tape, you can use cello tape instead. What I do is to just put some glue on the back of my paper and stick it to the other paper just like this and then simply take a ruler and draw seam allowance so there's something i want to mention when it comes to seam allowance because i've printed my pattern piece at 130 percent it means that my seam allowance is larger as well so if you look at the pattern pieces those dotted lines this is your stitching line on this particular pattern and original pattern has one centimeter seam allowance but because I've printed mine larger my seam allowance is larger as well so there is two options that you can you can uh, choose now you can either amend the original uh, seam allowance so you're going to reduce it in my in my case I'm going to reduce it so I'm going to only keep one centimeter seam allowance. This way I will know exactly 
how to sew my uh, my project when I'm at the machine and I don't really have to worry about calculating maybe changing seam allowance at the machine it, it can be a little bit confusing so since I have a stitch line here I can simply take my ruler and redraw the edge of my pattern but and then trim it off but I don't want to bore you <laughs> So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to use the same seam allowance as I have already on my pattern. So since I uh, printed mine at 130%, my seam allowance is about 13 millimeters. So I'm going to do that and add 13 millimeter seam allowance. Again, if you are reducing your seam allowance to that one centimeter, that's three eighths of an inch, you want to add one centimeter seam allowance but since i didn't amend the seam allowance i'm going to keep the same seam allowance throughout the entire project so i don't get confused so let's say i'm going to just draw my seam allowance now so i have about half an inch seam allowance in this situation just like that and then you can just continue with the side so there is a curved edge you just want to make sure you just kind of continue with that curve just like that and next you can cut it out if you are confused about the seam allowance and printing at different scales <coughs> I have different, I have a separate video tutorial on my YouTube channel. So after this live, I'm going to link it in the description so you don't have to look for it. Uh, but th this is the project I actually used uh, to demonstrate how to change the, the, sh the, the size of the pattern. So this is now complete. We, we have our back panel finished. So what we're going to do next is take our front piece and i'm going to just close my glue so it doesn't dry and next we're going to draw the shape of our flap and then we're going to draw the face and those little eyes so what i typically do since i i am a creating a symmetrical pattern what i do is to only do it on half of my pattern because whenever i freehand I found it extremely difficult to freehand exactly the same uh, shapes on both sides or on both side, uh, sides of the pattern. So typically I do it on half and this is what I usually tell my students as well. When they, whenever they are drawing a symmetrical pattern they can just do it on one. So what you want to do is to... you can... I'm going to draw a center line, so I'm going to connect the midpoints and just draw a center line. This will divide my pattern in half. So I'm going to work only on one half of the pattern. So first, I'm going to start with drawing the flap. And this is the shape I'm, I'm going to try to recreate. But since our front and back is slightly different the back panel is slightly narrower i don't know if you can see that on the camera but there is tiny tiny bit like more on the front panel front panel is slightly wider but i about about maybe two millimeters like an eighth of an inch on each side so what i'm going to do before before i start drawing on my um, front I'm going to look for the midpoint, so I'll fold that in half. I'm going to mark my midpoint. And then what you want to be careful of is to basically mark where is that edge. Because when you're going to construct your project, if you make your flap, I'm going to show you. If you make your flap too wide, it's going to go over the front and it's going to curl. So 
I'm sure you don't want that. <laughs> so what we what we need to do is when we are drafting our fr uh, our front flap, we want to make sure that the top edge, so this edge here, is the same or smaller than the back panel. So I simply like to just take that, match my midpoints, and I'm going to here is the stitching line so that's where the end of my back panel is and I'm going to trans transform this to here so I'll just try to do it in like a straight line just to give me an idea so as you can see here is that corner and here is that corner so this is how much is the back panel is smaller, like it's narrower by that much. So now I know where I need to end, I can start drafting my flap. So let me have a look. So what you want to do is to decide, and, and remember, since these dotted lines are our seam allowance, our stitching line, you try to imagine you are drawing inside that so whatever is beyond that point is seam allowance you don't really care about it at this point so i want to make sure that my flap is with between inside that seam allowance here inside of that part where the um, dotted lines are so first you need to decide how how low you want your flap to be because this really depends on on, on, on you it depends on what type of project you are making what what size you've printed so I'm not going to like measure it the exactly but I think around here will be a good amount so I'm going to show it this is how it looks like when the snap is closed so I'm giving myself on this about mm, two and a half centimeters so that's an inch no let me just measure it correctly yeah about two and a half less than two and a half so yeah i think it was about here so let's stick to that so measure however however uh, low you want to go with your flap and the first maybe five millimeters a quarter of an inch you want to draw a squared line so square square it to the center line so I'm going to just square it on one side since I'm only drawing half of my flap why are we doing it because we want to have a nice curve if you're going to draw a line that let's say goes like this or like this it's not straight your flap will have a shape so if you want to very if you want to create very pointy flap then yes, then you will have to draw to the point because this is how it's going to look like. And then there is going to be your flap. But don't draw like downwards because then your flap will have like a weird shape. <laughs> Unless this is your design, then, then do that. But since I want to have more or less like a curved edge, I'm going to start by drawing a square line. And then we need to connect this point with this point here. So now we want to like freehand that flap. So you, if you have like curved rulers, French ruler rulers, or something like this, you can use that. I'm just going. I'm just gonna go go for it. It's probably not going to be, you know, as pretty or as exactly how I want it, especially because I'm drawing it with a pen but looking at the shape i'm just going to draw something like this so i hope you can see that and obviously this is going to go on this side as well and it's going to continue but i'm going to draft the pattern uh, symmetrical so i'm not going to draw it right right away so once you have that sketched or drafted, what you want to do next is to mark the placement of your snap. 
So I've used uh, metal press snaps. If you want, you can use like mm, magnetic snaps or something else, other closures or even a button. And usually I would measure about centimeter to one and a half centimeter from the bottom edge of my flap. So about three eighths to five eighths of an inch. And that depends on the size of your snap. So since I'm using about, I think this one is half an inch, 12 millimeter snap here. I measured about 12 millimeters, half an inch as well from the bottom edge. And here is where I'm going to have my snap. So I like to make a little X and a circle. This indicates the center point of my snap. You can lower, lower it or put it higher. Again, it's up to you. Just see visually if you like it or not. You know, if I left the original snap placement, it would be here and on the pattern, it would end up like here. So it wouldn't look as cute. This is supposed to indicate the nose. <laughs> the snap supposed to be like a nose. Uh, so that's why it has to be kind of lower. So once you have that, what you want to do, if you want to create the pattern piece now, you can, but since I like to work in an order, I typically make the entire draft first and then I take my uh, paper and I create separate pattern pieces. So I don't have to go back and forth, back and forth, especially if I decide to change something. So I'm going to stick to what I usually do. So once you have your flap and you have your nose, then you can decide on the shape of that little face here. So what I've done, I just drew a like curved line. I'm going to just make it like this. Again, you can just freehand or if you have ruler, you can use your ruler. So like this. Keep in mind, again, you want to make sure the first two, three millimeters, like an eighth of an inch on both sides is uh, at a 90 degree angle because you want to make sure it doesn't have the, those weird points. So this point here is very important and then it's going to continue. So your reindeer probably will look completely different than mine. I can already see that the second one that I'm making will look slightly different than this one. But this is this is you know that that's absolutely fine and now what you what you want to do is to draw the eye and this really depends you know on you you can draw like an oval shape like i did so i just started to draw a random shape and make a little circle inside so that's my eye and it will be on both sides so you have to kind of imagine how it looks like as a whole. If you don't have that ability in your head, because I know sometimes it's very difficult to imagine something, especially if you are learning, then what you can do is to draw the other side of that pattern as well. And once you have that, all we have to do is trace those pattern pieces and then we're going to draft antlers and ears but what i'm before we do that what i want to mention is that even if you're like i drafted this eye now and i'm not really like 100 percent happy with it since i'm using pen i cannot really erase it you if you are using pencil you can simply erase it you know and try different lines uh, don't don't you don't have to always stick to the first thing you draw because you know sometimes when you look at the whole picture you know the proportion may be off you may not be happy with something so you have the ability to change it you know this is your project your design you you can change it at any point in time so I think I'm going to draw slightly smaller eye on my pattern piece and maybe later when I'm actually stitching, I may stitch it in slightly different place. So when I actually am at the machine, I may move my eye maybe slightly closer or lower 
and see how visually I like it better because at the moment I'm not sure if this was the correct place maybe I should have I should have maybe like draw it somewhere closer to the flap since my flap is a little bit wider than the original so yeah just just you know think what you like what you can also do is I'm just going to draw the other half just quickly what you can do also is to draw an eye like this you can see that often in like cartoons and stuff and make your eye more like this <laughs> that could look pretty cute as well so go go for it try different things you can create the different patterns and then when you are at the machine you know since we are using tiny bits of fabric you can see which one you prefer or do two completely different projects <laughs> so all right so this is our draft what we're going to do now is create our pattern pieces so to do that you'll need your tracing paper so i'm going to cut a small piece I typically use my masking tape so if you have a masking tape in a garage <laughs> bring it it's very useful when you are drafting patterns this prevents the paper from shifting when you are whenever you are tracing it so I'm going to stick that to my table let me know in the comments if if you're following along if you understand what I'm trying to <laughs> show you because this is a little bit different tutorial than my previous tutorials so I'm curious if uh, if you are just looking at me with you know confused face or <laughs> it actually makes sense so once you have your tracing paper ready what you want to do is start dra uh, tracing your pattern pieces so I'm going to start with my flap so I'm going to draw the center line. You don't really have to, but since I want to create symmetrical pattern piece, I'm going to draw the entire line. This will be easier for me. And you want to simply trace the outline. Mark the position of your snap. And what I'm going to do is to use the dotted line as a guideline because that is my stitching line. So I'm just going to use that. And then I'm going to explain you why I'm not just using that seam allowance, uh, seam allowance as a guide. So let me read. All right, so this is traced. So what you can do now is to fold it in half and trace the other half since I'm using tracing paper I can see through so I'm not sure if you can see that on the camera I'm going to put this paper underneath I can see the other side of my paper if you don't have tracing paper or maybe baking paper you may want to uh, you may you may want to trace this cut it out and then uh, draw it on on the pa on the separate paper or if you have tracing paper um, tracing wheel you can use your tracing wheel to just trace over the outline so there are a few other options but since i don't want to use tools that you may not have I'm going to show you how to do it on a tracing paper like this. So I'm going to retrace this flap. I'm 
Here we go. And this is this is the point when I said, you see, if I draw it a little bit, not at the 90 degree angle, I have like a weird point here. So I'm going to just smooth it with my pen because I don't want that. So this is my flap. And what you want to do next is to add seam allowance. So I didn't add seam allowance. I didn't use this original seam allowance for a reason. Let me put this underneath. The reason why I didn't use the original seam allowance is because you need some extra space. When you have your project, typically paper is very easy to fold and is very thin when you fold it. However, fabric, even though this is just two dimensional simple project, as you can see, the thickness of this fold here comparing to the paper is much bigger. And whenever you are drafting or amending patterns, you need to uh, account for it. You need to think ahead how your fabric is going to you know, like work and, and adapt to the shape you want to create. So what I typically do and I typically uh, tell my students to do is to add extra space, especially uh, on project like we are doing today when there is a seam allowance and then you can simply adjust the length of that flap as you go even even when you are at the sewing machine at the last minute you can always ad adjust adjust the height of the flap so what i usually do is to add between five millimeters to one centimeter uh, extra space on projects like this since this is very tiny project um, I think one centimeter I'm going to go with one centimeter just for the sake of you know being safe at the sewing machine as I said I can always adjust it so before I draw my seam allowance I need to add that uh, I need to add that extra space. So I'm going to, or maybe I'm going to add a little bit less since this is smaller project. So I'm going to go with seven millimeters. So I'm going to just draw a line just like that. And this is my pattern. So this line here, I don't need it anymore. So if I had pencil, if I was using pencil, I would just simply erase it because this is my new edge of the, this is the top edge of my flap now. So now that I allocated some ease, some extra space to the flap, uh, I can draw seam allowance. In case if you are still wondering why I'm adding it, is that sometimes if you don't add it, that extra space and you are stitching, I'm not sure if that ever happened to you, but I know it, it uh, happened to me many times when I was using patterns from other uh, creators is that the space uh, the, the lack of that extra space extra ease meant that when I was closing my project it was very tight it was very snug and can, you can imagine when you put stuff inside sometimes you, you even need that even more space than what I just told you but since this is just a flat 2D project, that should be more than enough. But this is something that uh, you can keep in mind. If you ever come uh, across a pattern or if you're drafting your own pattern and by the end you think, oh no, I don't have like, I cannot really close the flap. It's too snug. I have, you know, I need to pull it a lot. If you don't have space to lower your snap, you, you, you're going to either, you will need to either install this snap higher, so then you have extra space, but then your flap will like visually look smaller, or add that extra ease here to account, uh, account for, you know, the fabric thickness and the items you're going to store inside. So that's another um, reason why I always 
at some ease. So I hope this clarifies any confusion. <laughs> And now we can simply add a seam allowance. So I'm going to, since I don't have, I'm using centimeters, I don't have half an, half an inch on my ruler. What I'm going to do is to add half an inch along the top edge where the seam matching. So I know that the back seam and the front seam and my flap are matching but to be easier for me to draw a seam allowance around those those curves i'm going to use one centimeter seam allowance which is totally fine you it is acceptable to use different seam allowance throughout your project and to be honest whenever i'm sewing a project whenever i'm making something where there are curved lines, I typically use five millimeter seam allowance. So that's about five, that's about a quarter of an inch. Because for me, I found, I'm not sure how, how you find it, but I find so a smaller seam allowance to so much easier around curves. So if I was drawing this for myself, I would just, I would use a smaller seam allowance, <laughs> but I'm just going to stick with one one centimeter because I already started. And since we already have the stitching line here as well, even if you forget at later stage, you can always look at your pattern and see what you actually added. You know, sometimes when you are drawing your own patterns, this is actually the one thing that I really like because usually I don't include seam uh, stitching line on my patterns because it can be a little bit confusing with, with all the lines but whenever you are drawing for yourself you can do whatever you want so i'm kind of trying to speed this process up and this is how i usually draw seam allowance around curves so you don't really need any special rulers or anything like this you can use your straight ruler to draw stuff and just go slowly so it might not be perfect for this tutorial but I can always fix it later on so we have our flap drafted so once you uh, draft your pattern you add your seam allowance Remember to label your, label your pattern piece so you know exactly what it is. And usually what you would do is to mark your midpoints. So I'm going to use the center line to just mark my midpoints. And I'm going to call this reindeer, reindeer pouch. So you want to, what I would advise is to, on your label, uh, write the name of the project. So if you're making a crossbody bag, you want to write crossbody bag or if you even give a specific uh, name to that project and then you want to name the individual pattern pieces. So this is a reindeer pouch and this is flap. So I'm going to write flap and next you can write what you need to cut it from. So I cut it mine from external fabric and lining fabric since this is tiny project so this is what I'm going to write on my uh, pattern so cut one time external fabric and lining fabric all right and what I usually uh, do is to draw grain line so whenever you are drafting your own patterns always make sure to mark them as much as possible and Grain line is for me a great indicator of how I need to cut my fabric. So I'm going to use the center line as a starting point and draw a parallel line to that line. So I draw a little arrow. This will indicate my grain line, especially if you are using um, a fabric with a directional print, grain line is a great indicator because now, looking at this pattern piece, you know exactly how you need to cut it, how you need to place it on the fabric. 
this grain line points down so you know this is how your uh, print needs to needs to go if you are using non-directional print or like this one here when it goes both ways it doesn't really matter as much but just to be you know safe and just so you know for the future drawing a grain line is a must in my opinion <laughs> all right so next what we can do is to simply cut this out but i'm not going to uh, uh, bore you with that <laughs> i'm not going to waste your time so i'm going to go and draft another pattern piece trace another pattern piece and I should have enough space to do it on this paper. Yeah, I do. So I'm going to use the same paper. So now we're going to trace the face, what, what I call it face. So again, you want to draw the center line. If you don't want to create the entire pattern piece, what you can do as well what I'm going to show you actually now, so you have an idea what I mean. But first, I'm going to trace the outline. So this would be my pattern piece. Here is the position of our snap. So you need to make sure you mark your snap. And, and that's it. Actually, what you can not. I'm going to take this aside so you can see. So if you don't want to draw a, if you are, whenever you are drawing a symmetrical pattern and you don't really feel like wasting your time drawing the other, the other half, what you can do is to draw half of your pattern and then simply mark that is half. So you're going to draw, cut on fold. So instead of drawing grain line, you would draw a parallel line to that center line, connect it. I usually connect it with like arrows. So I draw a little arrows. And you would write cut on fold. So whenever you are cutting your fabric, your fabric needs to be folded in half. And then you would place this edge along the edge of the fabric where the, the fabric is folded. This way, when you are cutting your fabric, you will have nice symmetrical pattern piece. So that's another thing that you can do to kind of speed up, speed up your um, drafting or modification process. Again, we have our pattern piece ready. So next, you're going to draw your seam allowance and uh, label the pattern piece and one thing I want to mention is that I used a uh, faux leather so this is a non fraying fabric and I don't uh, if you've been sewing bags or if you've been uh, working with non fraying fabric you know that you don't really need to add seam allowance because you can leave the edges raw so the eyes and the face are cut from non fraying fabric which means I don't really have to worry about adding seam allowance to this point. Apart from the bottom edge, where the bottom edge is stitched in the seam. So as you can see here, this portion here still needs to be added. So if you really want it, you could use the original pattern and retrace the edge of that paper to add seam allowance this can speed up the process as well so you're only adding seam allowance along the bottom edge because this edge here is raw and we're going to just stitch close to that edge just to catch it and attach it to the fabric so i'm going to quickly just put face so that's reindeer pouch and you want to cut it one time from non-fraying fabric. Non-fraying fabric. Here you go. And this way your pattern piece is ready as well. So once we have that, you would do exactly the same for the eyes. So since again, this is uh, cut from non-fraying fabric, 
all you have to do is trace those pattern pieces so you would trace the outer edge of the eye and then trace the smaller portion the pupils or whatever you however you call it in English and I know this is such a tiny pattern piece so it's very difficult to like uh, label it <laughs> but you will have to kind of make it work for you so I typically have a very tiny envelope and I keep all those tiny pieces in the envelope with the other pattern pieces so this way I know that um, I don't lose anything and so I can just write here I I and we need to cut it two of those bigger ovals so two of those eyes and two of those tiny circles as well to indicate you know eye on each side of our pouch and again since this is a uh, non-fraying fabric if you wanted to uh, do this type of eye instead you could simply trace this shape instead so whatever you drafted this is basically what you would trace so this is not a complete oval because we have the face but this is exactly what you would do and then again you would write I and cut two times from ex uh, from non-fraying fabric there you go and do the same for this one but I'm not going to do it because it's so tiny so this is the main body of our pouch so the last two thing is to draw the antlers and those tiny ears and this is very very simple so i'm going to take a paper and what i actually i have already paper here and what i usually do is to play with it because to be honest when i finished making this pouch i looked at the pouch and i thought oh bloody hell i wish i uh, made those antlers slightly larger because the ears are quite um, nice and large i like the shape the the size of them but i wished the antlers were more pronounced so this is this is what you know what you can come across as well whenever you are drawing uh, and drafting your own patterns sometimes you want to you know test things uh, I would consider this as a prototype because this was the first project that I made using the modified pattern and this this gives me an idea of if I wanted to change anything and as I said the only change I would do is to make those antlers slightly larger so what you want to do is draw a line so you want to draw a line doesn't matter where this is the line indicating the seam so this seam here so that's basically that edge here you need to basically imagine you are you have the pouch and you're drawing those ears so since i've added mine to the top i take this top edge i place my pattern piece on the table and then i try to think of the shape so I'm going to draw the shape of my antlers and I'm going to make them larger because, you know, like I said, I wanted them larger. And another thing is that I made a mistake, made, me, blah, made a mistake of sewing them the other way around. So the, they're supposed to face this way. <laughs> That's another mistake I've made at the machine, but it's fine. This is just a prototype and I still had fun creating that project so let's say this is our pouch and what you want to do is to play with the shape so now I'm going to simply draw like random curves I'm gonna try to go for this type of shape and then I'm, I can see if I'm happy with it I don't know if it's too large now <laughs> or I made it too big now so that would be one and I would have another one here so next 
what you want to do is to draw the ear and maybe let me see how big is the ear I like the size of it so the point is about five centimeters and two millimeters so about uh, two inches so let me just measure five centimeters and two so here it would be the top point of my ear and that, that ear is basically like a shape of a leaf. So I basically drew this, this, this thing. And then you can play with the, with the shape. If you want more rounded ear, you can do more rounded ear. Yeah, but I like my pointy. So, <laughs> and what I've done here, when I was stitching it, I kind of folded the edge I'm not sure if you can see this at the at the camera but I folded the the bottom edge slightly just like by like an eighth of an inch I just folded it like this onto itself so I I like that um, I like that on my pouch so I'm going to keep that so I'm going to simply just draw a kind of like a leaf shape for my ear and again if you want to be symmetrical what you would do is to draw a line that is squared to this line and only draw half of your ear because as you can see my ear isn't symmetrical at the moment if you really want to be picky uh, but since I'm folding it and it's an ear I don't really mind, uh, I don't mind this to be, you know, a little bit off. I actually like it when it's a little bit off. But again, you would have to pay attention to how you cut it and how you stitch it. Otherwise, your ear may go, like, both, both of your ears may go in one direction. <laughs> so this is, you know, there's those little things you need to remember um, when you are drafting your patterns and then when you are at the sewing machine. When you're actually creating your project so for the simplicity i'm going to leave this like it is and if i think about it if this is my pouch and that will be the shape the size of my antler i think i i think i overdone it by a little bit <laughs> i think this is a little bit too much so again if i had a pencil I would simply erase it and redo it so I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller because this is this is just too much so maybe I go this big instead which doesn't help you because now it's a big mess but that's give you an idea of you know the reality so let me see so this is my pouch yeah I think I think this this is much better <laughs> so I'm gonna go with the smaller one so now since you so this is your draft so if you want uh, you can use this paper and cut out your pattern piece because again this is non frame fabric so we don't really need to add seam allowance apart from the bottom edge here so you would add your half an inch seam allowance because you need to stitch it to between the back and flap so that's why you need that extra seam allowance otherwise all those edges will be raw so we don't really have to worry about them so now you can take the take scissors and simply cut that shape or if you are not happy with this you can you know draw a few more different shapes and then place it against your pattern piece to see visually you know if you like it how it's going to look like if you are happy with it or maybe maybe you want different shape maybe maybe you want only two antlers like like two of those curves Maybe you want even more. Maybe you are better at drawing than me. So maybe you can draw like really spectacular antlers. Uh, do whatever do whatever you want. You know, this is just a kind of starting point to show you how easy it is to create 
a project like this. <laughs> so I hope I hope that that makes sense. So what you want to keep in mind now is if I so I would again I would uh, label my pattern pieces. So this is ankler ankler. I would cut it and then th this is where it comes. So I cut my ears from cork fabric. So that is more of a thicker fabric. So I only cut two of them. But since I used more of a lightweight for leather on my antlers, I cut four of them. As you can see, the back is exactly the same. So you need to indicate that on your paper as well. Sometimes if like you could use very nice thick cork fabric and you will only need two of your antlers. So I'm not sure what sort of scraps you have at home, what fabric you're going to uh, use for your project. But I wanted to point this out just so you know um, what to what to what to do in in the future when you are at the machine. So when you are at the machine, <clears throat> since this is uh, non-symmetrical pattern piece your antlers you need to cut one if you are if you are cutting one each so two in total you need to cut one like this and then one as mirror image otherwise if you're only using uh, otherwise they both would be in the same direction if you stitch them so you don't want that <laughs> so i <clears throat> sorry i'm losing my voice so I would I would write cut one time from non fraying fabric and then I would write cut one time as mirror image image non fraying fabric just like that and again if you were doing two um, on both sides doubled you would cut two uh, two from non fraying fabric and then to cut two as mirror image from non fraying fabric. So yeah, if you are doing both sides, both sides just double the amount basically. And yeah, and that's that's uh, that basically is what I wanted to show you. In the next tutorial that I'm going to release on my channel, what I'm planning to do is to show you how to stitch uh, this little project because the sewing instruction for this mini cone, coin pouch and for this are slightly different because we don't have that seam so the construction is slightly different and i want to make sure that you can actually finish this project so i decided to create separate video tutorial and so you can basically watch and you know and have something to refer to since there isn't any written sewing instruction for e neither of those projects so yeah so that basically that's all i wanted to share with you today let me know um, if you enjoyed this tutorial if you would like to see more uh, videos like this from me in the future i think this is going to be the last live this year uh, before christmas i don't really have much time but uh, hopefully I will do more of them in the next year. So yeah, let me know, you know, if how, how you get on. Let me know if, um, if you actually completed it, if you're going to gift it to someone um, or not. <laughs> let me know if it, was, if it was a total fail or if you actually enjoyed it. I really would like to know because I am obsessed with pattern drafting and pattern pattern modifications and I always have crazy ideas um, and I you know I never had anybody to share with because my partner doesn't want to listen to me <laughs> so I thought by you know being here with you that would give me you know nice opportunity to kind of spread the love of pattern drafting pattern modification and hacking so yeah i hope to see you uh, soon and if i don't see you before uh, christmas or if i don't speak with you uh, on social media before christmas new year i wish you merry christmas i wish you happy holidays and uh, beautiful and happy new year as well 
So see you next time. Stay crafty, friends. <laughs> Bye.